Do you have designs on refinancing your mortgage? How might you go about that? What factors do you need to consider? Well, here to talk with me about that is Dana Osbach from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Thanks, Bob. So um, how do you go about uh, evaluating whether to recommend uh, that someone refinance or not? It's a great question. And uh, in the last few months, I've called it refinance season. So with interest rates at incredible lows, we get inquiries regularly from clients about, should I refinance? Is this a good idea? And the first thing we always like to do with any financial decision is frame it in terms of red, yellow, or green. So red, like don't do that. Green, you should do this. Or yellow, let's, let's evaluate the factors. And with refi, we, we wanna run the numbers. And a lot of the numbers have to do with the primary goal. So is the goal to maximize this person's cash flow for retirement, or is the goal to get out of debt completely? Is that just something that means a lot to the person? So it's not always as simple as it appears in terms of, well, the interest rate is lower, I should do it. Mm. So you have some examples that you'd like to walk us through in terms of how you actually go through this process? Yeah, I do. So, you know, I, I've had several refis lately, as I mentioned. The first couple was age 64 and 66. They had a little over 300000 remaining on their mortgage and about 23 and a half years left to pay it off. Their payment was just under 1600 a month. And so their mortgage broker presented them with three options, refinance over a 30-year, a 20-year, or a 15-year. Well, the lowest rate was obviously the 15-year. It was, it was 1.99%, but would, it would have actually increased their payment to uh, almost 2000 a month. And so even though that was the lowest rate and they could afford it, it didn't really make sense for them. They're already retired. Um, you know, why have to withdraw more money from their investments? The 30-year option certainly lowered their payment quite a bit, uh, but the potential interest savings over the remaining life of the loan wasn't that much. I mean, they might save about $6,000 of interest over 30 years. So they're already age 64 and 66. So when we looked at the 20-year, the potential interest savings was $61,000. They'd actually pay off the mortgage three and a half years earlier than their current situation, and their payment was almost the same. So in their case, although that wasn't the lowest interest rate, it was the refi option that made the most sense for them. And if we have time, I have several other examples I can walk us through. Uh, by, by all means. Uh, but before you do, there's all, always a common question about refinancing, and it revolves around whether how much you can reduce your interest rate by. And some say if you can reduce it by 1% or so, that, that, that's a, a good time to think about refinancing. Is that worth just broaching the subject there? Now? I think that's a great rule of thumb. Yeah, absolutely. You also have to factor in closing costs and, you know, like I'm looking at, you know, cash flow needs. So is your maximum goal increasing the amount of monthly income you have available or is your maximum goal paying down the mortgage faster? So, so it's not quite as simple as just looking at the interest rate, but definitely a 1% difference is like a good starting place. Yes, we should, we should at least examine the options. All right. So couple number two, example number two. Yeah, example number two, a couple aged 75 and 74, uh, about $174,000 remaining on their mortgage. They had a 4.125% existing rate, uh, $1,174 a month payment, and just over 18 years remaining on their mortgage. And again, we examined three options, refinancing over 30 years, refinancing over 15 years, and refinancing over 10 years. And for them, the 15 year is in this situation, the one that made the most sense. So again, we were reducing the total term on their mortgage. Their payment was going to stay about the same, but they were gonna save about $33,000 in interest over the mortgage. And so their goal was just, hey, we can make the same payment, uh, pay this off faster and save interest rate. You know, they didn't need additional cash flow. So, so it was kind of a no brainer um, in terms of saying, yeah, absolutely, let's do this. If their primary goal had been maximizing cash flow, if they were constrained in retirement, then we would have gone with the 30 year. And so here was a case where the 30 year had a two and a half percent interest rate, the 15 year had a 2.625. So again, we didn't go automatically with the, the lowest interest rate option because they don't want to stretch the mortgage over 30 years and they didn't need to maximize cash flow. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it, 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 you have to look at the underlying goal of the couple, what their financial situation is, and that leads to the right decision. Right. Uh, and couple number three, example number three. Example number three uh, was a couple that had less assets than the other two. Um, you know, they're almost age 70. They actually have no first mortgage, but they have a home equity line of credit out on their first house uh, in about $50,000 amount. But they had helped their daughter purchase a condo during the Great Recession. She was unemployed. Uh, so they have a $60,000 mortgage on their daughter's condo, and the interest rate was 6%. They were told they can't refinance that as, at a lower rate, at least, because it's not their primary residence. And so a mortgage broker had suggested they, you know, obviously, you know, refinance their first house, take out a larger chunk, pay off both, both mortgages. Now, this was a case where they do need to maximize cash flow. They are in their home that they plan on staying in the rest of their life. They each have small long-term care policies that can help provide cash flow should they need long-term care later. So we talked about a reverse mortgage instead and said, you know, yes, you could refinance. Yes, it would lower your total monthly payments, but you have enough equity in your house. You could probably pull about $150,000 out, pay off both mortgages, eliminate your mortgage payment altogether. You're not worried about leaving your home equity on to your daughter because she owns her condo, you know, and she would own it free and clear at that point. And so they immediately began to look into that and had never thought of it. It's a really good solution for them. Right. So there's one more example I, I want to get to. But before I do, I just want to ask your thoughts about closing costs and whether you should take a no points closing or or pay the points. You know, that's an interesting thing. I'm refinancing my own mortgage. I know we were going to talk about that in a second. And I did choose to pay um, some points and I paid all my closing costs out of pocket. I don't want to wrap those into the loan. And if you're financially able to do so, uh, in many cases, I do think that makes sense. If you have to wrap those points into the mortgage, you know, then I, I'm, I'm usually not such a fan of it. All right. So let's talk about your case. It's a, it's a great example. Yeah. So in my case, uh, I'm not retired yet. Obviously, I turned 50 this year. Uh, I had 24 years remaining on my mortgage, about a $330,000 balance. And when I'm talking payments, uh, I'm talking just principal and interest. I'm not including the insurance and, and taxes. So my payment's about $2,100 a month. And so looking at refinance, I looked at 30 years and 20 years. I took the 30-year uh, in my case, it dropped my rate to 2.75%. My current rate was about 4.75, maybe 4.875. It lowers my principal and interest payment by about $700 a month. And my primary goal is maximizing cash flow so I can save more for retirement. And I am highly risk tolerant. I'm completely comfortable with volatility in the market. So for me, I will lock in a 2.75% rate all day long to maximize what I'm saving for retirement in the equity markets. And I know that I'm not going to you know, be concerned when the market's down 20 or 30%, which it will be at times. And so for me, that, that situation fits to say, yes, I want to lower the payment, lower the rate, and plan on investing the difference to, to maximize my retirement savings. Mm. So one last question. As we're talking, uh, the long government bond is rising in yield. I think it's about 1.3 last I checked. Obviously, that means that mortgage rates may start rising. If anyone has designs on refinancing, now would be perhaps the time to at least uh, make the inquiry before uh, before rates start rising Absolutely. Much. Absolutely. Right. I would do it now. Um, your mortgage brokers are busy, but they are going to hustle and uh, look at the options. And, and it's a great time to take a look at it. All right. Dana, as, as always, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. It, uh, it will help a good many people. Great. Thank you, Bob.